I love problem 14 because it incorporates many of the concepts that we have been studying here in unit 4 uh, and ending with really the parent function y equals uh, parent function, uh, let me just write that down here. I know, I know I'm going to need some of this space here, so I'm going to try to be uh, careful here. y equals the cube root of x, and y equals the cube root of x. When we graph that, if we were to plot some points, 0, 0, we have 1, 1, cube root of 1 is 1, we have a dot there. And we have negative 1 also, cube root of negative 1. That's an okay number. We can have a negative number under a cube root, any odd root. So the cube root of negative 1, since negative 1 multiplied by itself three times is negative 1, the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Now that looks linear right now, but it's not linear by any stretch because the next number we would pick for x is the next perfect cube root, uh, and a perfect cube. So the next number is not 2, 3, 4, it's 8. So if x is 8, the cube root of 8, we know that to be 2. So what, if you think about it, if you go way out here, you're going to have a dot out here. So you're going to go way out here to 8 and only up 2, and the same thing works with negative 8. So when we look at the cube root of negative 8, we get negative 2. So way over here, we go down only 2. So the graph looks like this, comes in as a vertical tangent right there, kind of like if you're going to be coming back this way but you're not coming back this way, you're gonna be taking a turn like that. And so it's, it's an S shape with a vertical, if you were driving a car along a path like this, your headlights would be pointing straight north, straight up at that spot right there, just for a moment, and then curving over that way. Similar, really, really similar to y equals x cubed, and so these are related, this is really cool. So it's related because this goes like this, comes over, and then if you're driving a car on this path, your headlights would, would be pointing directly west, uh, east to the right, and then you go up. So look at how similar these are. In fact, these are inverse functions. So that's the cool thing. This is some stuff that we learned way back when. Now it's an inverse of this. We couldn't say that then because we didn't know inverse functions yet, but now we do. So these are, all, these are both related, and that's why this is a really cool problem. So now we know that this is the graph of uh, the parent function. This is the graph of the parent function of y equals cube root of x. And here we have a transformation of that parent function. The transformation is here we have x minus 1 instead of x. Well, we know x minus 1 instead of x means we go to the right 1. And that means that because our h is 1, and then we have k being 2. This is our k value. So our h value is 1. So we go to the right one, and then the k value is 2, so we go up 2. And, so from, uh, and that's our inflection point, just like we had an inflection point on the graph of y equals x cubed. So we have an inflection point on the graph of y equals cube root of x. And the inflection point is our hk, same exact thing. So we go over to the right one, the right one and up 2. So from here, we had original graph that went through there like that. Okay, so we have our... Um, Inflection point goes over to the right one and up two. And then always, if, there's, if, the, if the a value is one, then we're going to go, there's going to be a dot there and a dot there, just like there was a, you know, a one, one, and negative one, negative one. So there's always going to be a dot like that. So then we come over here like this. Oops, that was a little not steep enough there. So we, we're kind of like this, and we're drawing the graph, and we're going to go up like that, and over. The main, <laughs> it's not a very good graph, actually. Uh, the main concern is that you show the graph going like this, coming up, and going over, like that. So you show this little S shape. Make sure you're careful about that. Again, this is the path that you're gonna drive a car on, then right here where you hit that inflection point, that's where your headlights are gonna be pointing uh, straight up. Like that. Okay, so that's the that's the f of x. We're going to label that f of x equals cube root of x minus one plus two. Graph and label the given function. That's what we just did. Graphed and labeled the given function. All right. And then on the same set of axes, find graph and label the inverse of the given function. Show your work. So we have to graph the inverse of this function. This is the given function. 
So inverse looks like that. And then we, uh, we know our steps for finding an inverse. So that's why all this space is over here. So we have y equals. So the first step is to rewrite the function with a y instead of an f of x. And then we reverse the roles of the, f, uh, of the x and the y. So we interchange the x and the y. And now we solve for y. That's, gonna, that's going to be our inverse of f of x. And so again, we go back to solving for a variable that's underneath a root. Okay, and then we want to isolate that. So we want to isolate that. We move any number that's on the same side of the equal sign as that radical to the other side. If we have a plus 2 here, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides because 2 minus 2 is 0. So subtracting 2 from the right side then gives us q root of y minus 1 on the right. And then on the left-hand side, x minus 2 means x minus 2, just the way you say it. Now, we have our radical isolated. That's the cool thing about that. If we have our radical isolated, then we get to do something to it. We get to undo what's being done to the variable. The variable we're solving for is y. And so if we notice here, we have the cube root. How do we undo cube root? Well, we cube both sides. So we're gonna, if we cube the right side, we have to cube the left side of the equal sign. So on the left now, we have x minus 2 raised to the third power. On the right, the cubing undoes. It's like it crosses off all this cube root thing. And so all we're left with on the right-hand side is y minus 1. So we're almost there. All we have to do now is add 1 to both sides. Don't bother. Don't cube that out. Just leave it because that's now in perfect form for us to go ahead and, and uh, graph it. So we have x minus 2 quantity cubed plus 1 plus 1 is equal to y. So therefore, oh, we didn't see that, sorry. Uh, we Now, therefore, we put this. This is our f inverse of x, but we have a space for it up there on that line. And so our f inverse of x is uh, x minus 2 quantity cubed plus 1. So there's our f inverse of x. And now we just have to graph that. And we know that this function here, again, like we talked about earlier, this is a, the inverse of the cube root function, and it's now just a transformation of our parent function y equals x cubed. Move to the right two, up one, from zero, zero. So here's our original parent function, and we're going to go ahead and uh, remember the original uh, Inflection point is right here at 0, 0. So again, we're going to go right 2 and up 1. So this is the really neat part where it all comes together. On the graph of the given function, okay, so the given, the given function is our f of x. So f of x has an inflection point of 1, 2. That's the inflection point. Remember with functions and their inverses, everything is reversed. So if the inflection point on f is 1, 2, then the inflection point on f inverse is 2, 1. How cool is that? And then we know what the graph looks like. The graph looks like that. And so all we have to do is go up and over, kind of like we're coming back down like a parabola. But again, if you're on a path right here, if you're driving on this road, your headlights are going to be pointing directly to the east, just to directly to the right. And it goes up like that. So that is a really neat problem that brings together a lot of things that we've talked about all year long, as well as all uh, throughout Unit 4. And that's it. Oh, sorry, that's not it. On the same set of axes, which we did, find, we did, we found the inverse of the given function. We graph the inverse of the given function. Don't forget to label the inverse of the given function. So this is f inverse. And that's just so many times that happens. Students will draw both graphs beautifully, that they won't label them. Okay, so I, I, I need to make sure you label both graphs. And that's it.